Hello everyone. This is our drive off to Target. I hope you enjoyed the first video in this series as always. This is our normal large now test loop. I think the blinker here is new. Let's see how it creeps. Again, it stops a little bit too far back for the stop sign. And it creeps good. It can see. Oh, it stopped again. That's good. That's new behavior. So it stopped again right there. That's really good. Ooh, what's it doing? This is new. It crossed the yellow line because there was too hesitant there. Same issue it had there as well. Interesting. This this seems like a downgrade. Uh, it, it so that's that um, is noticeable. Then uh, that reconfirms that it can't distinguish lane lines uh, poor, well poorly marked lane lines they cannot distinguish those as good on 10.3 10.2 is definitely better at that let's see how it does on an unprotected left here we got traffic coming now it's going to be different unfortunately or fortunately with uh it being fall leaves are starting to fall off and bushes are starting to dim out it should not go should not go Ooh. Okay. It made it, as you can see, obviously, but that was a little bit too uh, close for me, to be honest. Um, it should creep a little bit slower still. Uh, just, just a smooth, continuous creep until, until it can see. As far as you know, it should be able to know where its nose is on the road, so it's not out in traffic. Uh, and then make sure there's no cars coming, because it could see that car before it, uh, it stopped. So it needs to not creep out as soon. We're actually, again, not going to follow this navigation here. So I'm going to cancel it and let it go straight through here. This is good. It didn't go into the turn lane here. That's good. So phantom brake there. I'm really hoping this is improved in this version, but it it's not looking that way. It just random phantom brakes for no reason on two lane roads. It's the same type of weather, clear sunny day. Uh, if anything, there should be the shadows will probably be more harsh because there's less leaves on the trees, but. It should be very similar to the last test. And I don't know why the blue the blue line came up. I'm looking forward and both hands are on the steering wheel. Like you saw both hands on the steering wheel, so I don't know what's going on there. Apparently that can't detect like you can see both my hands on the steering wheel and it keeps on popping up on the screen. So apparently they've changed something to where it probably focuses more on vision now and they've decreased the sensitivity on the wheel. So you actually have to like put a lot of weight on the wheel, which is dumb. Like now that you've added vision, it should be able to like uh, just kind of lightly hold your hand on the wheel and be good enough. So it should be stopping again sooner for this light. It's not even, now it's seeing it here. Like it's not a bad break. But it should still slow down sooner, in my opinion. Because maybe it's just the way I drive. I and we can actually go up further. Um, there's there's two lines painted, as you can see there. And look, another Model Three to our right. Uh, I don't know if you can see that from the video, but there's a blue one sitting there. If we can make this stretch without any phantom brakes, that would definitely be improved. Once we get past these cars, I'll re-navigate us to Target. So navigation seems to be quicker. I don't know if that's my imagination or something else, but it seems to route quicker. It doesn't spin and kind of like think on it. It just boom, instant route. So that definitely seems to be improved. And that might just be an overall improvement with every version out with 30 the 36 build. But well, that could just be something with this particular build. I'm not sure. Either way, it seems improved. So it slowed because of this car. It caught up to this car. 
the follow distance that they um it kind of overrides my follow distance i notice it gets closer to this car before it starts slowing down that's because i have it an average now there's a bug that seems to be floating around that if you change um if you change these driving profiles like after you park or something it seems to maybe not let you re-enable full self-driving so i'm going to keep it on advanced uh or average for today and we'll see how it does it seems to be driving pretty okay for me now maybe mild would be my uh, preference we'll, we'll see that might have the smoothest overall outcome but for right now for consistency reasons going to keep it on uh average and make sure it doesn't screw up the whole the whole day We're gonna see how it turns into this lane right here. I'm definitely not a fan of this follow distance. It needs to get over in the right lane. Okay, good. And I, it actually started turning before I hit the stock, so I wanted to clarify that. So that is an improvement over 10.2 and any previous version. It would just wouldn't ever turn on the blinker there. So this that's improved. So it actually can't see the light, it, it appears. I mean, I can see the light fine. The B pillar should be able to see the light, but maybe the B pillar's not allowed to have light logic. It has to be the wide angle lens. Oh, that's good. Oh, okay, that's not. Uh, <laughs> it started breaking, so I had the tap to accelerate it to keep it from breaking there. Um, so it did decide to go through the yellow light, which is good. That's what I would normally have done right there. And, um, just what am I trying to say <laughs> to just make it through so you don't get stuck at the light that's what humans do you, if you're flowing through traffic you're just gonna keep on going through the yellow light just so you don't get stuck at it especially since only a few cars got through it we're gonna see if this is improved here to where if it will just randomly make lane changes so there's a car coming up on my left and it should just stay in this lane. There's no reason it should uh, get out of this lane. Look at that. It's the same spot too as last time. It just decides it, want, it wants to change lanes. The car, there's another car coming up on my left as well. So there's no reason it should be turning on the blinker right here. See right there. It, it, it has some logic. Wow, and the third time in a row with this light is changing. This, this is worse. This Stopping for this light was worse. And it was actually the same exact spot as 10.1. Um, sorry, 10.2. Um, the blinker behavior seems like... I, I just can't explain it. It's like it wants to get over in the left lane as soon as the car passes by. Because look, it turns blue. And no one really knows for sure what the blue means. I think it just means it's tracking that car's behavior like more precisely, maybe that's the thing it keeps turning the blinker on i'm canceling it fortunately it looks to me cancel the blinker and it needs to again i still think it needs to see light sooner like i can see that light up ahead but my car didn't see it until it was like it got in the view it's like you could tell that the car started breaking more harshly because all of a sudden it just showed up in the view and the car was like oh crap the red light um and those are going to be i think limitations of this camera hardware and it's resolution it's definitely resolution seems to be like affect how far up ahead it's able to see lights. Now maybe, uh, certainly that's possible they can improve the software, but stuff like that is, seems to be a limitation of camera resolution. Now I'm more than glad to be proven wrong, but that's an improvement that needs to happen just for overall smoothness. Now obviously I don't think it's more often than not, not a safety issue. Um, but it will improve overall uh, smoothness of passenger covering. So this has not improved yet. That uh, it's not slowing down quick enough. It slowed down for this curve in the road, but it didn't, as soon as it passed the 55, was hardly slowing down at all to get back to 45. That needs to be improved. 
And in fact, it needs to start slowing down to 45 before it gets to the 45. Uh, the law in North Carolina is technically you have to be on the speed limit as soon as you pass it. Uh, so that, it, obviously, you rarely will get a ticket for that. Um, and uh, the cop is hot, obviously a douche. If, if he's not going to give you at least a little bit past the stop, uh, the speed limit sign to slow down. But um, that does happen. And it just it needs to be corrected. I'm actually gonna cancel it. It's, it was gonna be in the middle of this intersection when it went to change lanes. So I didn't want that to happen. You shouldn't change lanes in the middle of an intersection. In one mile, turn left onto McKinney Road. Otherwise, it actually can get over in the left lane right now. There seems to be less traffic. It's also not Monday. Last time we tested was a Monday. This is Sunday morning, so it's probably going to have the least amount of traffic of the last few tests. I think the previous one, 10.1 before that, was on a Saturday morning. So, something we just have to pay attention to. Something I will note, phantom braking definitely seems to be improved. I'll go ahead and get it over in this lane. This is what it should be. Now, it needs to stay in this lane. This lane, not the left lane. The left lane gets onto the interstate. This is the lane we need to stay on all the way through. I'm going to cancel it if it tries and turn. Hopefully it doesn't, because that would be a good improvement, even over 10.2. Because it seems like 10.2 still had weird... Ooh, that's good. That's really good. Very smooth and, like, accelerated through the curves and then, like, not jerky or anything. More human-like. No, see, that's where it shouldn't change lanes. Fortunately, there's a lot less traffic. This is very smooth. This is improved. This gives me hope that roundabouts will be improved. Gives me good hope. Okay, it's tried to go in the turn lane again. That's not the right lane. Correct lane. See, look. look at the map. It's because it it has this jog. Now, that could be very old map data. It's, it's looking at the map data wrong. That's the problem. Um, so that's just bad map data. Look, right here. And this is because of the average speed profile. If I was on assertive, it would try and get over still. Now, maybe once I get past this light, it'll stop doing that. Okay. It does have to get over in this turn lane. Past where that van went in. Get over. I mean, I, I can wait until the. It should get over now. Okay, it should have got over sooner, for sure. But it's good. It didn't have traffic backed up, so it didn't really have that issue. This car, I guess, forgot to turn on the green light. So we have a full green light here. The turn. And that was a. Wow, I keep mind. That was a zero disengagement drive, everyone. Well, okay, okay, I'm not counting until we get past this. Feet, turn right. Oh no. <laughs> okay. That it recovered. So that's an improvement over the 10.1 but it made the same mistake as 10.1 made the same mistake it was still zero disengagements we can count that but I'm not happy with that behavior this is where we're gonna disengage right here kind of go into this parking spot here um, yeah that that last bit has improved the cars probably obviously didn't know what I was doing I went into a left turn lane and had my right blinker on <laughs> uh, yeah so Clearly, that has room for improvement still. Uh, hopefully, future versions will mitigate that. But still, again, zero disengagement drive. Still improved from multiple versions ago. Still, again, this is a two-step forward, one-step backward process. I'm going to take the back road again. We're going to try doing that this time, and I'll see how it goes. Thanks for watching, everyone.